oil, it has been one of the main energy sources for hundreds of years. We have become dependent on it, using it for mass energy and fuel, and also making it into plastics and other amenities. But only now do we begin to notice that we are experiencing problems due to the prices of oil. You could ask almost any citizen of the United States about the prices of oil, and the first thing they would mention is that it's too high and only increasing. But what is causing the prices of oil to be so much? What is causing the oil crisis? To answer this question, we must first consider oil itself. Oil is rare. It can only exist in certain places where all the conditions were right to make it. Millions of years ago, animals and plants died, and if they happened to die in a swampy area, gravity would force them to the bottom of the swamp. Once at the bottom, swamp bacteria would decay and rot the dead animal or plant, and the pressure from the water above compacted the decomposed matter into hard, dry matter called peat. Eventually this peat was covered up by other rocks and dirt, and as the layers of earth above it kept building up, the weight and heat increased. If the pressure and temperature were great enough on the matter, the peat would transform into natural hydrocarbons over millions of years. Oil is the liquid form of this natural compound, and because the conditions must be just right for it to be made, it is rare. Also, it takes tens of millions of years to make it, so what exists now is all we have, and therefore it is non-renewable. Although the oil sits deep underground, us humans discovered it and found many ways to use it. However, in order for it to be on the market, it must go through many steps. First, oil needs to be discovered in an area where it is possible for it to be extracted. So, scientists go out all over the place, deserts, oceans, mountains, and survey the earth below these areas. To do this, scientists must use seismic technology to shock the earth and generate an image of the underground. By interpreting the computer images, scientists can determine where oil is and how much of it there is. If it is concluded that there is enough oil in the area and that it would be worthwhile to obtain it, engineers and architects will then be gathered to design and construct an oil pump. It takes time and much research to do this, but eventually the pump, which could be an oil rig, a submersible pump, or a nodding donkey, will be ready for use. Once in use, the oil pump collects oil into some sort of container where it is held until it is sold to a refining company at a price that corresponds to the world market for the oil. However, the refining company cannot do their work at the storage area. They must transport the crude oil to a refinery. There are many ways of transporting oil, but the most common methods are via pipelines, trains, semis, and tankers. Once at the refinery, the oil is separated from its crude mixture by distillation and then it is usually sold again to a storage company. The oil is then moved to the storage company's facilities and held there until some other company decides to buy it so that they can either sell it to us consumers as it is or transform it into another form of oil such as gasoline. If it is sold as the former of the two possibilities the company will sell the refined oil at a price according to the world market. But, if the latter of the two possibilities happens, the oil must go through several other expensive treatment processes at yet another company's factory until it has been made into gas or something else and is ready to go on the market. Either way, once the oil or form of oil is there, it is taxed and then sold to the people. In fact, when consumers buy gasoline, 71% of the total price they pay goes to extracting and marketing the crude oil. Then, 15% goes to transporting, refining, and marketing the clean oil. And the last 14% goes to taxes. Each of the steps of oil production has a factor on the overall price of it. And, as oil becomes scarcer, we can only expect the prices to rise not only due to the peak oil theory, which says that when oil production peaks, prices will skyrocket due to supply and demand concepts, but also because the greedy oil companies wish to continue their record-making profits. So, as time goes on, we can only expect the price of oil to rise, and the only way that us consumers can cope with this increase is to find ways to reduce our dependency on oil, 
and eventually end this oil crisis.